Hello, Mindy. Hello, how are you? Very good. How are you? Fantastic. Hope it's not too early on your end. No, not at all. Well, diving straight in with the art of self-defence, one of the first things that struck me about it is sort of uh, Jesse Eisenberg, not known for his his action uh, qualities and his martial artsness, as far as I know. Um, how was it sort of training people like that in a relatively short amount of time to get up to be of any credible standard? Um, so basically, for me, I work with them each separately, um, Huh? during pre-production to train them in the martial arts, but the level that made sense for their characters, but also in a way that would complement each of their unique personalities that they portray in the film. Uh-huh. Um, so basically, like, Jesse's world was, he was only supposed to be a yellow belt, right? Yeah. And Imogen as well, like, a, a brown belt, but really a black belt, and Alessandro, a black belt. So... So it was basics, but then also was teaching them what they would need to do for the progression of the film, because the way that I see it is that your storytelling through movement, and that how you play a note, um, sound frequency vibration, you can play a note, but it's the pitch, so it's the same thing as doing one punch, it's the emotional intention behind that punch that you throw, and the imperfection is what makes it interesting, so I wanted it to very much so be Jesse or Imogen's journey, and... Um, yeah, we just got to work and knew what we were supposed to do, and they are incredibly talented. And um, I had a week and two hour increment blocks like two hours with Jesse, two hours with Emily for you know Monday to Friday, and that was it. Wow. Oh. They're very fast learners. <laughs> All right, uh, hi there, Mindy. I'm uh, I'm I'm uh, one of the presenters with Will as well. I'm Mick. Pleased to meet you. Hi, nice to meet you. Too. Uh, yeah, well, just uh, uh, just quickly, just as, as I was listening to you uh, explain that, um, obviously, with him being a yellow belt, uh, well, the premise was that he was always going to be a yellow belt, and you, you can see that in his movement. Did you have to work on the awkwardness of, because he just, the whole the whole thing, it was a very physical performance. He's, you know, it's got 95% on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, or tomatoes, as you would say, in the, in the US. Um, and it's, mm-hmm. me, me personally, I, I think when it's called The Art of Self-Defense, it's, it's a very art house type movie. The, the way that, the way that it, it is, moves, it's an indie movie. Straight yeah, yeah, very, forward. very much so. You can see, <laughs> not just way from the way it looked, and certainly not budget-wise, but it was just the um, way that he moved. He had that real awkwardness of someone who'd been beaten to a pulp, and uh, was trying to learn a new skill. And he reminded me, uh, it's a long time ago now, but he reminded me of how awkward I was when I first started martial arts. Was that something you had to teach? Or all of that just came out? Um, I mean, that's the thing um, that I thought was so unique is that Riley, he created something that was very strange because you, I feel like you can connect to every character um, in the story. Um, and that's, I think that's the the most important thing about filmmaking is to show the human condition. And that's why Riley very much so, the realism and the action, there's like no speed ramping. I wanted it to never feel like there was some double that you're you're following Jesse's journey because that's what makes us human. Yes. And, um, and I find that that's so important for people to find that it's, that's okay, you yeah. know, um, and that we all have struggles and and you, no one starts out as black belt. I mean, Alessandro did a very good job in learning 24 hours how to be a black belt, but yes. he's um, an experienced person. Yeah, but, yeah, but, but, but to, to, just, to, just to interject there, um, I, I, I totally got yeah, that. Was that was, he, he, uh, the casting was amazing for him because oh, yeah. literally, literally, um, that he literally, uh, for me, he typified what I find a lot in martial arts anyway. He was very charismatic. When I first, when this first came on my radar, I saw it as a trailer with, with a friend of mine who's a very good martial artist as well. And the minute we saw it, it was like, wow, this is a dark, dark comedy. And you, know, you just get that <laughs> trailer. But then I was like, I know nearly everybody in this movie. I know a version of somebody. This movie has got everybody that I've ever met in martial arts. And the other one with Alessandro, uh, you know, he was he was Pollock's Troy, and you know, he was he was the only thing he was in uh, Face Off with uh, John Travolta, uh, with Nick Cage and John Travolta, obviously. 
And uh, uh, he, uh, he was like the most believable character in there. Yeah, yeah. well, apart from uh, John Travolta's hair, hair piece. That was the most, that yeah. was the, that was the most I mean, believable thing in the movie, right? But None of them else. had any martial arts experience whatsoever. So, like, I had to go from teaching them how to bow or right. what it was like to be in a dojo. And because I started martial arts when I was four and I have competed, um, I stopped competing at age 22, but I this year, yay, 30 years I've been doing yes. martial arts, which is kind of crazy. Um, but because I've, I know I put a little bit of myself I felt like in each character and um, I mean, even Sensei's um, Kata where he does the heart grab. Yes. Um, I used to do that in my creative form when I was like 10 years old mm-hmm. and I now question now that I was like, well, you're joking me. Like, you, you, oh, you, no, I'm not kidding. You, and, you, you, um, you, you literally like, did the exploding, you did the exploding heart technique in your form. Yes. No <laughs> like, way. When I was like 10 years old. Well, yes. well, <laughs> so I, I, I just thought that that was really funny if we did okay, that no. to the person that asked the question. <laughs> no, 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 that is really cool. And the thing is, I still teach, I still teach the, the, the you know, the throat rip by Dalton in Roadhouse when I teach seminars. Uh, they always say, what's the most mm-hmm. dangerous technique? And you know where, you know where Patrick Swayze rips out Jimmy's throat by the river? I actually teach Yeah. Him deadpan at a seminar and then people ask me would it work in MMA and I'm like well I, I think it's banned by the UFC they won't allow you to do it people actually believe that but I think you're exploding I think you're exploding heart techniques much better um when you were working on it when, when you were working on it did you, did you get the feeling it was going to be because it's very like almost David Fincher so it's almost like Fight Club meets Master Ken but with depth you know Master Ken is so throwaway but there were some really yeah. salient points. Did you know you were? Did you? Did you win? Oh, no, wait, wait, was the last question? I think the question, because Mick might dropped off there, was did you did you get a sense that there was a sort of comedic quality to it whilst you're filming? And if so, how did you keep the comedic element, but but still keep the martial arts in there? Um, I mean, if you play something like so serious it comes off as comedic. Sure. Yeah. So, um, and like, I mean, like, like there, Alessandra on his Instagram had posted that video when after I taught him the form, we were filming it to send it to Riley for approval and he posted that video and it's, it's literally like an hour within me training him that form and teaching wow. him like how to bow and like be sensei. It's so funny. He, I don't think he was supposed to post it, but it, it lives on the internet, um, on his Instagram feed. And it's like, um, yeah, I mean, to me, it was just like his side kick was really important because like those like certain things, but then also like, even though you are a black belt, you're still not perfect. So that's like, you know, it's like, I was like, yes, it's, it's the energy that you're exuding, you know, and that's that toxic masculinity is where like, he really did his character development where like, I am sensei, like, this is just like, you know, like, it's like a puppy chest kind of, you know, like. Really? He went all method actor on you, yeah? Oh, I mean, all of them did, you know, like, Im- Imogen knew the importance of what she had to do as well and like training with her um because also I incorporated um gymnastics when I was competing against boys when I was younger and that's how and gymnastics and contortion and that's how I would beat them so Riley wanted Anna's character to have jujitsu uh, elements um and that's what I also find so great because it was like kind of like her secret weapon to one up the guys and then also she's teaching the kids that and for me the underlying message behind that is that these kids by default, by her being a woman having to teach the kids class, they have a strong female leader yeah. or role model. And so that to me, like, is a underlining message that, like, I mean, I cried, you know, like, when I saw it for the first time. Because I was like, and then, but when she did her fight, um, it was so funny, the stunt double blocked it twice. Um, and every, like, the cast and crew, you know, they had never seen it with, you know, the stunt double, and everybody was just like, like, Oh my god! And then like I was just sitting there, kind of like you know, secret coach on the sidelines, just like y'all don't even know what's about, about to happen. Like it was about to bring this fire, and then he yes. went, and it was like it got silent. Like everybody's mouth was just like, 
<laughs> they just saw the stunt double and thought the stunt double was fantastic. And then they saw Emmy and Emmy just brought the heat. And I was just like, yes, that's my girl. <laughs> and then I just felt like a super, super proud to stay in the corner. Like, yes, yes. yes. But then you, you, you've, hit on the, you've hit on the point that a lot of people who don't do martial arts don't realize. You mentioned jujitsu. Jiu-Jitsu has been a real leveler because men and women now roll a lot together in Jiu-Jitsu. But one of my best, one of my most important teachers in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is a woman. And um, it's, it's really leveled the playing field, you know, because for years, you, you know, you couldn't have an intergender boxing match. But now, you know, there, it's, it's almost legendary on YouTube where you'll see a young girl beat a young boy. In, in a competition of Brazilian jiu-jitsu. And I personally, every time I say it, I love it. Because, you know, yeah, it, it, it I should mean, be totally level, right? Yeah, well, see, that's the thing that kind of um, upsets me now, is that when I was competing, there was no separation in the boys and girls divisions in sport karate. Um, because of that is why I believe that I have a strong rooted foundation, that I didn't know that there was a difference in gender, which is why I decided that I was going to be a stunt coordinator, uh, yes. which isn't necessarily a, a woman um, dominated field. Um, but I feel like it is important for girls and boys to grow up with without these broken traditions of like gender roles stuck in their head. So I hope that, you know, maybe that they would bring that back with some other sports as well. Um, yes. That right. there shouldn't be a separation because then as a kid, like if you have that foundation like I mean for me that's what it was that's why I, I didn't know the difference I didn't know that I was you know mixed race I didn't know I was all these things I just thought yes. I was a human being and I still believe that um mm -hmm. and I believe that I, I mean, my whole mission in life is just for equality I love that you mentioned that about Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu because that's fantastic um but that's that's the, what my background is, is is you know competing in sport karate and there was no separation so yeah. I just yeah, you, I, 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 the, one, the one thing is, though, you know, Mindy, at the moment, it's uh, right right now, especially in the UK, we've got World Cup fever because, uh, yeah, America beat us yesterday. Uh, but when you're talking about equality, uh, anybody who's watched women's football or women's soccer, it, it, this country's gone crazy for it in the UK because... You know, yeah. so, so, like Alex Morgan and you know, Megan Rapinoe, people like that. These these women play football that I'd watch. I won't watch guys play it because they're rolling around the floor crying. And these girls are like, <laughs> they they are seriously tough, and not just tough, but they're really, really, uh, you know, they're really skillful. They're they're great. They're great at it. So. Uh, when you were competing, well, strategic, strategic, and also style. I feel like. Yeah, not oh. like I don't know girls like they have for me at least it's like it was all about strategy like how I said that I had to incorporate other things to one up the guys because I knew that I was at a disadvantage because my body was built differently you know especially becoming a woman um, yes. mm -hmm. so you learn to use the tools that you got. And that's like what I think that that's so cool about Anna and that message that's in the movie is like you know um, you're not a weaker sex. And you're not, we're just different. But I think that there's a harmony. Like, we, the yin-yang, there is no yin and yang. It's yin-yang. It's one whole. Like, men and female, masculine and female energy. That's why Riley, like, not only on screen but off the screen, he, he wanted to have, um, you know, female department heads to balance out the male energy because of the male-dominated lead cast, you know? And right. so that's why I got the job to begin with. Um, that was going to be my next question. I met question. him a year before. Yeah, I met him a year before um, I actually got some script because I sent coordinated dozens of music videos and it's a small like indie like community and um, and also my martial arts background. So um, I've actually worked with the cinematographer that did his first movie and this movie as well. And he introduced me to Riley and. We just met, and then Riley then touched base again when Jesse signed on, sent me the script, and then I got the script, read it. I went to Joanne Fabric, which is a fabric store here in America, yeah. and I got a rainbow belt for me and my dog, <laughs> and I put black and red stripes on it, and then right. took a photo and just wrote, replied back thoughts, and then just the photo, 
And then Laura Riley just really like wrote back, holy shit. <laughs> and so like, just to, like, I, just to let him know, because, you know, act, like a visual, you know, act, you know, actions speak loud in words. So I just wanted to let him know I fully understood what, his movie was about. Last question, if you don't mind, Mindy, I'm just going to ask you now, right? Mm -hmm. um, in, in, the, in the movie, it really, really shows the sinister world, how toxic masculinity does. It, 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 yeah, I, I've seen it in my, in my life in, in martial arts. Have you seen that to that degree in, in your martial oh, arts? Yeah. yeah. I, I have. Some example. I part of this movie. <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, uh, how, do you, how do you think they can counterbalance that then? How do you reckon we can counteract it? By showing this, you know, by showing it in a comedic way or like by not like just beating it down and being like shoving information down and throat. Like that's why, that's why movies are what and they're supposed to be. Is like they're supposed to show you the human condition and then yeah. maybe you see a piece of yourself and then be like, oh, like I'm like that. And you know, like without being like, that's bad or like, you know what I mean? Or being like shameful about it. But like every, like that thing that people say that you're who you are for the rest of your life by age 25. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I find that to be the most ridiculous thing that I've ever heard in my life because it's bullshit. Like, change is a change of state. Bruce Lee says that, you know? Um, every day you wake up and you get to mold your day. Like, it's a fresh, full ball of clay. And you get to mold it into whatever you want it to be. Same thing with, like, breath and, like, yoga. Like, if you heat metal, metal will bend. Um, if you create enough yeah. body heat, your body will bend. Your body will change. Like, you can pick up martial arts at age 50 and without hurting yourself, like, learn a new craft like it's you're forever always changing every day um, um, but you're, you're, so. you're, exa you're exactly right yeah yeah it's an ongoing process you know uh, my, my main teacher daniel no santo is 83 and he's the most progressive and open-minded man i've ever met he's like he's amazing and he giggles and laughs and he loves it yeah exactly Santos. yes yes oh that's, man he's, yeah. he's a oh he's a light isn't he well, do you, you, you know what? It, without sounding too gushing, he's what I hope every human being will end up like. I think I think he's I think he's the like the evolutionary <laughs> end to where we'll all end up, male or female, where he's so non-judgmental, so open to new ideas, and for where other people will turn around and say, "Yeah, dismiss it out of hand." He's always prepared. He's always prepared to learn um, from anybody. He's amazing. He. he, he He's, and he's what a sensei and is. my experience in, in class with him um, is that he would give a laugh and like and one of his um, students will you know bring up a technique that he did ten years ago and he's just like, ah, like oh yeah and then like would well, then bring that back but he's so humble and so pure and so yeah. so fully like developed as a human being oh. like a real human being that he. Um, he, he, he's not afraid or has an ego to to know that he's going to relearn something from a student again. That, yeah. you know, things. Yeah, and exactly. He got a jujitsu, he got a black belt in jujitsu at age like 70 something. Yeah, well, he start, he <laughs> started jujitsu like, at 59. He was 59 years okay. old when he started jujitsu. And the, the other one as well with him is whenever, whenever I'm with him, he calls me Mike. And as I say, he knew Bruce Lee and <laughs> almost gets my name right. That's good enough for me, right? But he's, he's the only person who doesn't get what he's about. He, he doesn't know what all the fuss is about. If you, like I've said to him, Guru, I'm convinced you're a genius. And he, he, he's like, no, I'm just an ordinary guy. And I'm like, if only everybody was ordinary then. If only everybody was that, I could I could. But that's the beauty, life. that's the key. The death to the ego. The ego yes. doesn't exist. Once you let go of that, you're free. And that every human self, like Bruce Lee says, self-help is the only help. There is no other option. And once you know who you are, truthfully, it's the hardest work you'll ever do in your life. But once you do that work and you accept and love yourself for who you are, you don't see anything else. You're yeah. free. You unlock this, like, this, this world. And that's like, yeah, like, I, my friends, like, even doing press for this, like, I didn't know that I'd done anything special. I just simply was doing my work. 
<laughs> yeah, but I, I'm, and I'm getting more, back to the community. That, it doesn't get uh, any better. We, we my don't part, do I mean, I'm just still, I'm still struggling as human. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe but, exactly but I'm, I'm glad that you enjoyed the film. No, no, no thank, thank, you thank you very much, Mindy. Take, Take care. care. Okay, well, next, right. next time in the name, I hope to meet you guys. Well, I'll come and see you. God bless. Thank you. Okay, Bye. perfect. Thank, Thank you. you, guys.